John Kay, you were in Berlin on November 9th. Can you describe for us what that was like um, and how people reacted? It's amazing. The, the sense of euphoria was, it was, was intense. Uh, I arrived in the evening and went promptly to the wall. There were. Yeah, you're on. Yeah, yeah now I'm on. Yeah. I arrived in the evening and went promptly to the wall. There were parties everywhere um, ad hoc groups, choirs, church groups, uh, drinkers, uh, everything. And you could hear the sound on the other side of the wall of East German military engineers. Uh, crossing what was the death strip, removing the mines, removing the inner curtain wall, and clearing a path to it, as it happens, Potsdamer Platz was the first to be opened, if I remember correctly. Uh, and the, uh, the sense of this was amazing. The next day, uh, people again were everywhere. They were climbing on the wall. Eventually, the Berlin uh, Fire Brigade put trucks and dump trucks nose to nose so the people actually wouldn't get hurt. There was saws, uh, uh, there was a risk of uh, setting off landmines, uh, all kinds of, uh, of uh, possibilities uh, appeared. And then I drove across, remember it was still the DDR, uh, but the holsters in the DDR border police were empty or there were no clips in the pistols. The lineup of cars coming the other way was huge. I think something an incredible 800,000 East Germans in Berlin has crossed in that first 24 hours. And by the way, 20,000 didn't go back. Uh, they stayed right then and there. Uh, uh, the uh, the uh, sense of this was intense. Uh, they were East Germans kissing the American military policemen at Checkpoint Charlie. And <laughs> <laughs> Not something that normally would happen in anyone's world, but this time it did. Uh, and it was an exciting time, it really was. There were East Germans who thought we'll be able to preserve this that we like, the, uh, the subsidized housing, the, what they thought was better medical care, which in turn wasn't really true anymore. Uh, but again, they were relics of history. History overcame everything and just moved forward. What was life in East Berlin like in 1989? I mean, was there food? Was there medicine? What was the situation for the people who lived there? Streets were empty. Uh, nobody went out at night. Uh, it was fascinating to cross from one side to the other. Even after the wall was open, it was still a desolate, desolate urban environment on the far side. Uh, I don't know what the food situation was, uh, but I can tell you that the bars on the western side were crowded. And interestingly enough, what did the East Germans head for first? Uh, fruit stands. They loaded up on bananas. Uh, sweets. Uh, I remember my translator. I had high school German, but I couldn't rely on it for sophisticated uh, interviews. My translator wanted gummy bears. She loaded up on those. Uh, she also, by the way, was a fan of, uh, of uh, hillbilly music. And I have to tell you, <laughs> neither here nor there. Country music. Uh, automo <laughs> automobile showrooms were jammed. It was a very interesting time. It really was. And the sex shops. Oh, and, yeah. And well, I left shop. that out. But yes, there were long, <laughs> long lines in front of the sex shops. Yes.